Hey there, everyone. How's it going? Today, we're going to go over an aorta protocol. Now, I've already done an aorta protocol before. This one is going to be pretty much how I do it, but also showcasing the GE Logic E10. So you see the beautiful images that it takes. So beginning sagittally, proximal. You got your uh, liver. This is your aorta and sagittal. Look how crisp that looks. Now, I'm using the six, the C26 probe. So that's the one that's uh, it's a smaller curve probe. It's like the regular curve probe, but smaller. It goes up to 10 megahertz, I believe. Uh, very, very good imaging. Obviously, a patient has to be slender uh, or pediatrics for it to really, really shine. But, you know, on adults that are slender, you can also get some really great images. So aorta and sagittal, proximal. Now, I didn't measure these all at the same time. I usually measure proximal, then mid, then distal. But after I finished the imaging, I, I did this quad screen to do just all the measurements on one page as, a whole, as opposed to having a whole bunch of measurements. So you have proximal, sagittal. This is sagittal, that's transverse. Uh, Mid-sagittal and mid-transverse. Here's the aorta. This is the vertebrae. This is the IVC. Here you can see the liver. So you can measure. <clears throat> some people like to measure the AP in transverse. I do it in both just just because it should be the same from here to here and from here to here. Now, if you're off of the vessel, maybe off to the sides of the vessel, you might under measure. But you know there's an aneurysm. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to mismeasure a potential aneurysm because you're slightly off. Uh, as uh, as when it comes to the the lateral, the width, this is a good size to measure it. Some people have been talking about getting the aorta and coronal. I'm measuring it that way, but this is much easier. So you can do all your measurements in the transverse AP and side to side. All right, so sagittal, then with color, proximal with color. I also like to take one image showing the SMA and celiac artery. So SMA is here, celiac artery is here with color. This is with power Doppler with the map to show direction. All right, so then spectral Doppler or PW. Here you got a nice, beautiful triphasic waveform, very clear spectral window. Um, I like to make sure that my sweep speed is at five because I think normally the sweep speed is at three. I like it at five to give some nice space in between the the peaks, especially if you have a patient that has tachycardia. Their their peaks are going to be uh, their heartbeat is going to be much close to each other. Um, this should be measuring under here, but that's fine. This is the auto measure, uh, feature that it has, but 156 centimeters per second was a piece of solid velocity. It's got a nice clean waveform, All right? Then transverse again, aorta, vertebrae, IVC, and then with color, then mid here, you got the mid aorta. Now you got the left renal artery. But usually, usually this is, I'm getting this, it's not really sad, I'm getting a coronal off to the side, approaching from the right side. So the right renal artery should be coming out here in that banana peel sign. But obviously you only see one artery. Now there's a reason for that you'll see later on. All right, so then mid, sag with color and with spectral Doppler. Again, nice triphasic waveform. I also like to make sure that the scale settings are, are right uh, in order to reduce aliasing and the, the gain is low enough so you don't have a whole bunch of background noise. All right. Computer's a little slow. So then here's a linear image of the mid aorta. Here you can see the vertebrae. This is the intervertebral disc, disc spaces. And this is with the MVI, so the microvascular imaging. Beautiful stuff. You can see how close the aorta is to the surface of the skin. Very slender. And then transverse. Again, with and without color. And then distal. So you're distal, and then you'll start to see the bifurcation by here. This is about the level of the umbilicus. So 1.2 centimeters, 1.2 centimeters. So the same AP uh, dimensions. Again, the vertebrae, a little bit of the IVC over here. All right, distal, sagittal, with color. Nice triphasic waveform. And then the bifurcation. Now, in order to get the bifurcation, you're gonna want to, you're not gonna be able to get it here. You know, you're not gonna be able to get a midline. You're gonna have to go coronally 
from the right or the left from either side that might allow you to see that if you know hopefully there's not so much bowel gas with uh, some increased pressure you'll be able to see it but you should be able to get the bifurcation in some patients you're not going to get a sagittal in the middle you have to go coronally through the sides and depending on what side you're approaching from i'm approaching from the right so this is the right common iliac artery and this is the left common iliac artery so take that another clearer picture Oh, actually, look, I'm approaching from left, so I was wrong. So this is a left common iliac artery, and this is the right common iliac artery. So depending on where you're approaching from, this is the B-flow hybrid mode. So it's B-flow on top of grayscale. This is very good if you have any stenosis. I've had patients with stenosis of the inferior mesenteric artery that this has showed very clearly. So very good uh, mode to have. Regular color Doppler, adjusting the scale so there's not too much aliasing and not too much background noise. Not too much, you know, bleeding outside of the wall with the wall filter. Again, and this is just regular B-flow bifurcation. And then MVI or microvascular imaging with the linear probe. So if there was any type of stenotic activity there, you definitely see it. Then transverse, right common iliac artery, left common iliac artery. Now this you can get it from midline. So midline transverse around the level of the umbilicus. umbilicus right common iliac artery, left common iliac artery, vertebrae, right common iliac vein, left common iliac vein, right there, with color, B-flow hybrid mode, B-flow regular mode, you see the flow in all four of those vessels, so definitely the bifurcation of the aorta and the confluence of the IVC. So now I go to the right common iliac artery, and here you see the right kidney. So there is a pelvic kidney, a right pelvic kidney or inguinal kidney, and that's why the right renal artery was not coming off of the normal spot in the aorta because it's ectopic. All right, so transverse and sagittal. You can't see here, but that's about uh, 0.7 all around. So that's good. Kidney in the front with color. And here you can see the common iliac artery and then bifurcating into the external and internal iliac arteries. All right, so external iliac artery, internal iliac artery, also called the hypogastric artery and common iliac artery. A lot of people have problems differentiating these vessels, especially when they first start out, they might be a little lower than they think and they think they're getting the common iliac artery, but they're really getting the external iliac artery and that you know, can cause some confusion, especially if there's pathology and then somebody else goes to scan it and they're not getting the pathology. They're getting the pathology, but not in the right spot. So the radiologist, what's the radiologist to think? Oh, this clot or whatever has migrated or has gotten worse or has changed or is a new, you know, process here where there was the one there. So you got to know your anatomy, guys. And this is B-flow. So right common iliac artery, external iliac artery, internal iliac artery. You can see also the, the the flow on the cortex of the kidney here. So you see the vessels. This is a uh, renal vein. Beautiful triphasic waveform. That's how it should look all the way down to the dorsalis pedis in the leg. And pretty much we stop there. I don't Doppler the external or internal early arteries. So again, transverse with the kidney here. With color, without right kidney. And then left, common iliac artery, common iliac artery, common iliac vein, and transverse, without color, sagittal, without color, measuring it, about 0.7 as well, all around. All right, with color, spectrodoppler, again, nice triphasic waveform. You can see that last peak here, if you lower, maybe uh, decrease the scale one, or increase the gain a little bit, or lower the wall filter one. Again, the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. Now it's also, you know, especially on skinny patients, it's also good to know that to not press too hard. If you come here and you press really hard and you try to Doppler that, the velocities are going to be elevated. They'll be normal waveforms, but they will be elevated just from the pressure you're putting on the vessel. So external iliac artery, internal iliac artery, common iliac artery. With B-flow, nice bifurcation. I try to get fancy and do a... A logic view or panoramic view of the entire aorta. You can see it's very clear. There's nothing inside the aorta. Um, but as the aorta is always pulsating and you're trying to do a, a logic view, it's not. you're not going to get a perfect uh, panoramic.
panoramic, but I tried anyways. I tried it a couple of times. The second time I went a little faster and I tried to, I tried to like anticipate the beats and after every beat move. And it was a little better, but you see the 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 anterior surface of the artery is pretty uh pretty clear. The posterior surface not as not as good, not as much. Here you see some bowel in front of it. You know that bowel had gas or fecal matter in it with gas. It would definitely obscure all that part of the aorta. And that's pretty much it. So I just wanted to show you guys my protocol of the aorta, which I've done before, but on the GE Logic E10, which is just an amazing machine. I'm having so much fun using it. I use it as much as I can, and the imaging you can get with it is just fantastic. Uh, hope you guys found this useful. Okay, bye.